Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using Spearman's correlation coefficient in SPSS. So Spearman's correlation coefficient is also known as Spearman's row, and it is a non-parametric alternative to the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, otherwise known as Pearson's R. So Spearman's can handle ordinal level data, can handle ranked data. So taking a look at the sample data I have here, this is a set of fictitious data. And you can see there are three rater variables. And there are 30 participants, and there's an ID for each participant. So let's say that there is a special training program. And there are 30 applicants to this program. Uh, but there are less than 30 seats available in the training program. And we have three raters that use a variety of instruments to rank order all the applicants from 1 through 30. So we can arbitrarily choose rater 1. And in this variable, we can put all the participants, all the applicants in from 1 through 30. And that's what I have here. And at that time, the ID variable would be assigned. So that's why the ID matches the rank of Raider 1. And then we can look to see the ranks of Raider 2 and 3 and see how well they match each other. So how well you have agreement between Raider 1 and 2, and 2 and 3, and 1 and 3. And as you can see, there is both agreement and disagreement between these combinations of raters, but they disagree in different ways. So if you look at rater 1 and rater 2, you can see these two raters largely agreed on the rank order of the majority of the applicants. But where they disagreed, they disagreed by a lot. So the applicant that Raider 1 felt was the fourth ranked, evaluated as the fourth ranked, Raider 2 felt that applicant was 27th ranked. But then again, there's agreement here on 5, a big agreement here on 6, agreement on 7. So there's a lot of agreement, but where there's disagreement, there's a lot of disagreement. Whereas Raider 3, there's disagreement largely across the board. So Raider 3, just looking at these data before there's even an analysis, you can see there's quite a bit of a dis disagreement between Raider 3 and Raider 1 and Raider 3 and Raider 2. So how can we measure this quantitatively with Spearman's correlation coefficient? Well, we'll go to Analyze and then to correlate and bivariate. And we're not going to use the ID variable in the analysis, so I'm going to select Raider 1 and hold down Control and select Raider 2 and 3. Move them over to the list box here named Variables. I'm going to make no changes under Options or Style. And I'm going to uncheck uh, Pearson's R because I have ranked data here, not scale data. And I'm going to check off Spearman and click OK. And as you can see, this gives me one table and lets me draw comparisons between Raider 1 and Raider 2, Raider 1 and Raider 3, and then Raider 2 and Raider 3. So before I start interpreting these values, let me give you an idea of what they mean. So a value between 0.1 and 0.29 meaning a correlation coefficient between 0.1 is generally considered a small relationship. 0.3 to 0.49 medium and 0.5 and greater, a large relationship. So looking here at Spearman's row, we can see Rater 1 to Rater 2. Uh, we have a medium relationship, 0.442, is not statistically significant. There is even a lower level relationship between Raider 1 and Raider 3. 
meaning closer to zero, 0.26, that would be considered small, and then Raider 2 to Raider 3, 0.241, uh, still small and a bit smaller than the relationship between the ranks from Raider 1 and Raider 3. And again at the 0 0.05 level, none of these relationships was statistically significant. So going back here to analyze and correlate and bivariate, you can see there's also another option, Kendall's tau, which is a similar a statistic to Spearman's correlation coefficient. Kendall's tau looks at concordance and discordance. Concordance being uh, the number of times two raters had the same rank and discordance when those two raters did not agree, the number of times they did not agree. It works a little better with small sample sizes and it tends to be more conservative but not in every case. And let me give you an example of that. So I'm going to select Kendall's tau and I'm going to leave Spearman checked off too. So this analysis, this output will give us Kendall's tau up top and Spearman's row on the bottom. So remember, these are the same data being analyzed by two different statistics. So if you see Raider 1 and Raider 2, you can see it's 0 0.471 that's actually higher, that's showing a higher relationship than Spearman's row, 0.442. But you remember I said earlier that Kendall's tau is generally more conservative. Well, you can see for the disagreement between Raider 1 and Raider 3, Kendall's tau has a lower value. It is more conservative there than Spearman's row. And for Raider 2 to Raider 3, it also produces a more conservative value, a lower value, 0.168 compared to the 0.241. So you can see for Raider 3, two non-significant results on Kendall's tau. But for Raider 2, there was a significant result from between Raider 1 and Raider 2 when there was not on Spearman's row. And that has to do with the way these raters disagreed, and I touched on this in the beginning. If we take a look at the data again, you can see that generally Raider 1 and Raider 2 agreed, but when they disagreed, they disagreed by a lot. Whereas Raider 3 tended to disagree across the board. So in cases where you have mostly agreement, but where you have disagreements large, Spearman's would actually be more conservative. But we have kind of general disagreement throughout all these different applicants. Kendall's tau would be more conservative. I hope you found this video on Spearman's correlation coefficient to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.